because you have the platform, it's not necessarily your responsibility to share. You don't have to share anything you don't want to, but it does, it does make an impact because like you said earlier on, there's so many taboos, whether it's about endometrioma, endometriosis, women's health, infertility. It's like, we're not supposed to go into our rooms, close the door and pretend that we're not going through anything because it has to do with something below the waist, you know, to, mm-hmm. to use the, the great words of the endometriosis documentary. But, you know, <laughs> here we are in 2023 and it's, and it's still difficult to be heard. And, you know, I feel like you were fortunate in a way because you had a doctor who saw it, recognized it and was able to get you into the right hands when one of those repeated stories we hear a lot of, um, especially at Endo TV is I kept going to doctors and they said I was fine. And I was told that nothing was wrong with me, that maybe I was stressed or, you know, whatever, unhappy in my life or kind of like gaslighting. Then, you know, meanwhile, they were dealing with endometriosis and they finally get into, you know, the right doctor. And they're like, geez, how are you walking around with so much going on inside of you that wasn't supposed to be there? Um, You champion women to use their voices to be heard. What is your recommendations for someone who thinks they might have endometriosis and maybe they're not being listened to by their doctor? Just find another doctor. I think that you always have to listen to yourself And if you think something is wrong, I mean, you live in your own body, so you should listen to yourself. And I I heard horror stories exactly like you just described. When I started sharing my story, it was like I walked from doctor to doctor and they were just feeding me some antibiotics and just saying that everything just oh, that's normal like oh yeah it's totally normal that you're in bed for three days after you get your period like no that's not normal and I don't know whoever like gave you a medical license to say stuff like that it's just it makes me so angry honestly when I hear that women are just going through crazy I just crazy stories honestly even with just regular like gynecology and gyno issues like BVs or UTIs or anything like that when people are saying this is normal that's not normal it's common, but it shouldn't be, you shouldn't live your life, you know, going through painful moments like that. So if you have a doctor that's not listening to you, find a second, third, fourth opinion until you real like until you get some kind of answer. When somebody tells you, oh, that's, you know, some people just go through that. I don't know. That's just not good enough for me. No, no. And just because somebody has you know, MD next to their name or whatever qualifications, it doesn't mean that they, like you said, you live in your body, you know yourself better than anybody else. So if you know something is wrong, don't let a medical degree change your mind otherwise, or feel defeated or feel like you're crazy. Cause we know that, that so many times you're not, you're not crazy. You really do have something medically wrong with you. And I also want to say that women should make sure to go get their checkups, regular checkups, because this was a regular, regular checkup. It was just me trying to see, oh, should I get my IUD out now? Or maybe in a, you know, it was totally normal. And I just discovered something. And you always hear those stories like, oh, she discovered this while she was in a regular checkup. And this is exactly what happened to me. And I was urging everybody like on my Instagram every week, I was posting a little poll. Did you, did you get your checkup? Did you get your checkup? And so many girls were like, okay, I'll go, I'll go, I'll I'll get my checkup. And it's just easier to even just know everything's okay. I can sleep peacefully at night. So I think just taking care of your body and doing all your checkups, whatever, you know, eyes, teeth, gynecologist, everything, just be on top of your health. Yeah. Cause as you said, if you do not have your health, you do not have anything. Exactly. For sure. Um, what is what is your plan going forward for your endometriosis? Do you have any kind of, of like plan with your doctor that you're doing, or is it more like you're just gonna continue? I mean, you're always gonna be healthy, but continue just hoping it doesn't come back. So I asked them, how can we, how can I make sure that it doesn't come back? So right now I'm taking birth control pills, mm-hmm. even though it was so. I had my IUD for so long and it was so nice to just not think about it. Now having to take a pill every single day, is just, it's exhausting. (laughs) And I know that some people are 
against pills, but I, he told me this is the best way to kind of keep it under control for now. And then after I have my first child at some point, things are maybe going to change, but he said the best thing to do is just, just pay attention to my body and get my checkups as often as I can. And yeah. And unfortunately there's, I wish there's some kind of test that can just tell you like, Oh, you're good now. And you're not good. I don't know. Right. Yeah. And there are some studies. There's the Rose study, because as you know, like you said about your doctor and having to take the sample and send it out in order to confirm endometriosis uh, through a biopsy, um, there's a Rose study that is taking extra like menstrual kind of tissue periods. And they're hoping to be able to test through the menstrual blood so that women don't are, you know, those born with the uterus don't have to be so um, <laughs> go through such invasive processes if they don't have to. And another goal of mine is to just bring more awareness to it. And I mean, even what you just mentioned with the Rose study, like I had no idea. I would love to know that. I think so many things like that should be just more common knowledge. I don't know. I just, I didn't, I, I wasn't sure if like I'm living under a rock, but I was, I thought that I'm very, you know, self-aware and I'm into health and wellness. So it was just very weird for me that I didn't know anything about it before I got diagnosed. Yeah. Well, Endo Found just launched Empower uh, last month and Empower is for high school students and it's a curriculum that they can watch online if they want to with their caregivers. The school can instruct Corinne Fox, who's one of our Endo Found ambassadors and Lexi Stevenson. They're going to their old high schools and they're going to be doing lectures on it. And I'm going to do one at my high school. And it's just a way to show like the younger generation, like you need to know these signs and symptoms so that early intervention can stop you from getting, you know, more progressively sick or have more extra pelvic involvement or anything that could become more severe with the disease, which we know it has the ability to do so. Yeah. I mean, some, some stories that I've heard of women that they were just battling with this for years and they, I mean, still yeah. are going through a lot. How was, how, how was it for you? How long was your entire journey about with endo? I mean, technically it's still going, um, mm -hmm. you know, cause there's, there's no cure. I think there's just like management for it. Um, yeah. So I was diagnosed in 2016 and then had a few surgeries, had some extra, well, a lot of extra pelvic involvement, um, including ureter entrapment and all that scary stuff. And that was after I had my son in 2018. Wow. Yeah. And the other thing with endo too, is that can lead to complications. I had a breeze of a pregnancy. I felt like my best self, even though I had to do shots throughout of it, but like, I really felt really good. And then during the C-section, I had a uterine adenine, which is a hemorrhage, even though it was a scheduled C-section, which apparently can be more common in those with endometriosis, which I did not know that you could be more likely to hemorrhage. So like so many things that can kind of go along with that diagnosis and everybody's different, but it's good to know if you're pregnant or plan on being pregnant and you're planning your birth plan to like, just make sure that your OB knows all these things so that you can be prepared for what could possibly go wrong. Not that it will, but I know I certainly wasn't, I had no idea. And again, I thought I was really savvy about endo by that point. Um, yeah. So it's, it's like an ongoing thing. Um, yeah, it's one of those difficult those perplexing diseases, but I'm hopeful because we have people like you using your voice and, and that is so, so encouraging. And you're reaching a whole new audience with what you're doing. And then we have a lot of amazing researchers and endosurgeons, and there's all new approaches coming. And just, I think even from like the gynecologist perspective, maybe they don't know about endo or know a lot, but if they could at least recognize it and say, Hey, this is out of mm -hmm. my field, but I can send you to someone and they're gentle and they're kind and they listen to their patients. I think that will make a world of difference going forward because of the advocacy that people like you are doing. Thank you. Uh, and I think that the whole thing was less scary than I thought originally when my, when I was at my, that first original gyno checkup. And when I saw that cyst, a million things went through my mind. And then my gyno was like, Oh, you should go and get some like tumors tests, I I started bawling, crying. I'm like, what do you mean to like? I, 
it was so scary. But then obviously, as you start going through everything, it's not as scary as I mean, it's going to be like very emotionally challenging and you're going to be in so much pain. But it's it's a it's not it's it's kind of I'm not even sure what I'm saying. Like, it's scary, but it's not that scary. Like, it, it was very scary to see that I have to go through this. But while I was in it and because I had a good support system around me, it was not as difficult as I thought it was going to be when I first got diagnosed or like when I first spotted that cyst. And I still vividly remember the the, the just like my reaction was so like me, what do you mean? Like, are you, are you sure you're looking at the right, yeah. you know, screen? But yeah, it was, it was pretty large. Yeah, no, I you I think you had like a very what was that you were holding up in one of your stories? It was it was like an it was like it was like a size of an orange. Yeah, it was gigantic. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where did that fit? And then I was speaking to some friends that also had a similar situation, and they told me how they saw that maybe they were gaining weight or that one side of their stomach or something was kind of bloated, mm -hmm. but that was actually a cyst. But for me, it was just where did where did that even go I didn't understand like how can such a huge mass be inside of my body and yeah, I just you're a small don't know person. you're a small yeah. person it's not like yeah yeah, yeah. I'm like, so like where did you go like you said <laughs> get the test uh make sure to stay on top of your your yearly visits because you could have something brewing and you don't know about it so the earlier you can get to it the better yeah makes so much sense. But yeah, I, I mean, keep keep talking about it because I really <laughs> do think I mean, I found you. And so it's, it's incredible to the power of of using a platform for good. Yeah, I, I do agree that the more we talk about it, the more people are going to be even if you're going to be like me and be totally freaked out when you, you know, see that you have a giant cyst like that, you're going to see somebody else that, you know, went through the same thing. And they can kind of walk you through it. You're going to feel less alone. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking your time today. Thank you. This was so much fun. It was so lovely to chat with you. And I'm so happy to hear that even though you're still battling with it, you're good now. And just this is a beautiful thing that you guys are doing with Endo TV. And I'll keep on, you know, be, a, be in touch with you guys. And you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was great. You, you, I mean, you seemed very, very comfortable.